Yes, it's clean. Yes, it's clean. Yes, it's clean. So our topic today is for the development of GIT, and we will also see some important congenital anomalies, which happens during the development of GIT. Okay, so you have studied some basic or some embryological development in the life cycle. If you remember this picture, that half the yolk sac and amniotic cavity is formed. Do you remember this? There is formation of three germ layers. What are these three germ layers? Endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm. Okay, and when there is elongation, you will find two important cavities. One, it is called as amniotic cavity. And then here you have the yolk sac. This is yolk sac. After that, what will happen? There will be the folding of embryo will happen. So here, this is the first condition. After that, you will see this embryo will be folded like this. There will be head fold, tail fold, and as well as lateral folds. So what is happening? When this fold will happen, this part of dorsal part of yolk sac, you can see here with the yellow, it is the yolk sac. So the dorsal part will be incorporated inside this fold. The dorsal part of the yolk sac will be incorporated inside the foldy, folded embryo. And this Dorsal part will form a tube-like structure, which is called as gut tube. Okay, this is called as gut tube. And this gut tube is going to form our GIT. So here again in this picture, you can see, uh, have you studied the development of face or uh, head and neck? Head or not? Like we have some pharyngeal arches, some pharyngeal uh, arteries, which will help in formation of the muscles of the face, muscles of the head and neck. If not, okay, no problem. Just we will see that along with this gut tube, the anteriorly we have the pharyngeal arches, okay, which will also help in formation of the part of esophagus. So this gut tube, which is inside the head fold, it is called as foregut. The part which is inside the tail fold, it is called as hindgut. And the part which is in the middle and which is in connection with the primitive yolk sac, it is called as midgut. So this is the picture after the folding where we have the incorporation of the yolk sac into the folded embryo and this is the primitive gut and these are the subdivisions. Head fold forming the foregut, tail fold, hind gut and this middle part it is which is inside the or which is uh, the part in connection with the primitive yolk sac, which is called as mid-gut. Now you have to see carefully that when this development of gut tube is occurring or when there is development of primitive gut is occurring, the side by side other organs are also developing. Okay, so like this here, you can see this area, it is cardiogenic area. You will find here the formation of the heart. Okay, then here this is the notochord. Do you remember in the development of CNS, maybe you have seen the notochord, which is going to give the brain and spinal cord. So 
now our gut tube it extends from where from the oral membrane this is called as oral membrane okay this membrane will rupture and there will be opening of the oral cavity and the cloacal membrane this is the cloacal membrane the cloacal membrane will be when it will rupture it will give the opening for the anal canal okay and like in female if it will there will be development of on the formation of the vaginal opening okay because now we will see when we will see the development of the cloaca it is little complicated but just remember this is the stomatodium which is the oral membrane okay and this is the distal most part which is cloacal membrane now we will see mucosa mucosa will develop from the endoderm okay the mucosa will develop from the endoderm only few part which is not developed this we will see later and the muscles of the GIT whole muscles the smooth muscles they develop from the splanchnic secondary mesoderm okay so any if you remember any muscle will develop from the mesoderm and generally most of the lining of the inner organs it develops from endoderm now in any part of the git because it is like a tube okay so still it is a tube so what will happen in this tube there will be proliferation of the endoderm as as i told you the mucosa develops from the endoderm so first of all there will be proliferation of endoderm which will make the lumen completely closed okay because of this proliferation the lumen will get completely obliterated and at the eighth week of embryonic life again this lumen will have some sort of cell degeneration and finally recanalization happens okay this happens in whole of the gut tube suppose suppose there is obliteration of the lumen at 6 week but there is no recanalization no cell degeneration will happen at the wait week 8 what do you call to this condition this is atresia okay so there is it means there is no can recanalization there is completely this lumen is blocked it is called as atresia now if there is recanalization but it is incomplete your the lumen of this part any part you take esophagus or any git lower part if it is recanalization is happening but it is incomplete so that condition it is called as stenosis okay and sometimes the recanalization it will happen in improper manner okay which will divide the lumen into two parts that is called as duplication okay so this i am telling you in general about git it may happen in any part of git so now you should be aware what is the meaning of stenosis what is atresia and what is duplication so now we have the foregut midgut and hindgut so this you already know what is the artery for foregut what is the artery for midgut and what is the artery for hindgut now again this is very important picture for you that you can here see now the foregut is developing this is the foregut which is developing but along with this you can see not only the part of git this foregut is giving also there is a formation of a respiratory diverticulum from the foregut and also if you need notice here you will see yes there is also the formation of the liver but from here which is also from the foregut okay so these two structures 
are coming from the foregut other than the part of git you will find the respiratory di diverticulum develops from the foregut and also the liver bud will develop from the foregut okay and this is the developing heart okay this is different it will not come from your foregut this is developing heart okay and also you will see side by side the development of aorta is also happening okay this is the aorta so this is the development of aorta is also happening and you can see some of the vessels are also getting incorporated here so after in the next stage you will find that this is the gut tube which is getting some of its shape by like stomach and the some mid gut loop okay and here you can see that yes the abdominal aorta has given its important branches which are also going inside the gut tube like celiac superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric artery after that one more important thing you can find here that there is the development of the mesogastrium okay these are the peritoneal folds so this peritoneum also will present from the embryological life as soon as the gut tube will develop the gut tube will have one anterior or ventral mesentery and dorsal mesentery which will be attached to the posterior abdominal wall okay anterior or ventral will be attached to the anterior abdominal wall like this here just take the example of the stomach so you can see this is the anteriorly or ventrally and this is dorsally so this is called as dorsal mesogastrium okay and this is ventral mesogastrium okay so in the developing ventral mesogastrium here you will have the liver bud here you can see this is the liver liver bud okay so this is the development of liver and here you can see this is a part of the dorsal mesogastrium which will finally form the lesser omentum and because of the presence of the liver the anterior part will become as the falciform ligament okay this is dorsal mesogastrium then this is the duodenum the second part it will develop as the duodenum so this is also the mesentery of the duodenum which is here dorsal mesoduodenum finally it will disappear okay and here you can see this is the mid gut loop which will form the proper mesentery of the ileum and jejunum okay and this is the hind gut so from the hind gut you will have the dorsal mesocolon just you have to correlate your lecture which you have studied yesterday how the peritoneum was present and how it is developing so now what are the structures developing from the foregut so as already we know it will form the esophagus stomach duodenum till the opening of the bile duct then you have liver biliary apparatus and pancreas other than this as just now we saw we have the respiratory diverticulum okay so this respiratory diverticulum will form the upper and lower part of the respiratory system okay and as well as the upper part of git like pharynx oral cavity tongue ten tonsils and salivary glands they also will develop from the foregut okay so now for if i will ask you about the derivatives of the foregut so you will not start only from the esophagus you should know the pharynx right the oral cavity and respiratory diverticulum parts of the upper and lower respiratory tract so here again this is the developing embryo in the developing embryo you can see how this is the pharynx okay here this is the esophagus now if you notice carefully you will find that along with the esophagus the trachea is parallel to this and its development is also happening parallelly okay and these are the respiratory buds which is going to give the lungs now stomach has also developed somewhat 
here you will find some more buds for the pancreas okay and this is the our mid gut tube can you see the mid gut tube how it is rotating okay and it has a connection with the yolk sac still okay because the mid gut is a part which is the connection with the yolk sac finally it will form the umbilical cord so arterial supply yes it is supplied by the celiac trunk except the pharynx respiratory tract and part of the esophagus do you remember what is the um, the arterial supply of the esophagus yes girls boys anyone some esophageal branches will come from where any idea no okay so again in this you will see that this is the stomach developing stomach and this is the ventral mesogastrium okay which has been divided into two parts by the presence of the liver bud okay so what are this part the first one which is between the stomach and liver that is the lacerimentum and the part which is between the liver and anterior abdominal wall it is called as falciform ligament okay and this is dorsal mesogastrium this is dorsal mesentery okay now how the esophagus is developed so obviously it will be developed from the cranial part of the foregut just distal to the pharynx this is the pharynx so just distal to the pharynx you have this part of the foregut which is going to give rise the esophagus along with the esophagus as i told you you have very important thing here that is called as respiratory diverticulum so the development of esophagus and trachea it occurs side by side here you can see this is a foregut and here you have the respiratory diverticulum so the part which gives rise to the respiratory di diverticulum that also elongates and forms the trachea okay so like this here you can see this is the your foregut okay in which one septum will arise what is that septum called as tracheoesophageal septum this one okay and this trachea so now here you can see this is the tube now slowly this tracheoesophageal fold is happening then it will become tracheoesophageal septum and finally you have two tubes esophagus and laryngotracheal tube like this okay this is the septum and now it is completely separated so now you can imagine if this separation will not happen okay so embryologically if at any stage you will find that the separation is not happening what could be the condition so that condition will be okay so that condition will lead to the tracheoesophageal fistula just i will tell you first this to make it clear this condition okay this is called as tracheoesophageal fistula so there may be many condition what will be the condition that this trachea and esophagus is developing separately it has no connection with the stomach and the another condition which will form the fistula because there is no complete separation between the trachea and esophagus here okay the sometimes what will happen the esophagus will end blindly and the communication will be between the trachea and stomach okay and here also you can see there is a communication between the trachea and esophagus okay so this condition is if it will happen it is not compatible with the life 
the as soon as the baby will be born the baby will have like many symptoms like vomiting distension of the abdomen okay so this will be diagnosed at birth itself so just we were talking about the esophagus so we have some more thing okay now esophagus was short now here you can see as the liver is going and lung heart it is going little downwards so this will allow the growth of the esophagus like this here you can see previously you will find the trachea and esophagus they will develop parallel side by side it will be same in size okay but as soon as the heart and lungs will descend even your esophagus will elongate So this is the process of the recanalization. This is the tube. Then you will have the endodermal proliferation, and then finally you will have recanalization. And this is our final gut tube, okay, which is hollow. So if this will not happen, the condition, as I already told you, we will have the atresia, we will have the stenosis, okay. Now, as I told you, the some part which is not de developing from the part of the foregut. So here you have the muscles of the esophagus in which the striated muscle. Okay, the striated muscle has some different origin. It will origin take origin from the mesoderm of fourth and sixth pharyngeal arches. So I, I really don't know whether you have studied about the uh, pharyngeal arches, which are six in number, which gives rise to the muscles of the face and neck. So but here you should remember that the fourth and sixth will form the muscles of the upper part of the esophagus. The lower third muscles, it will take origin from the surrounding splanchnic mesoderm. As we know, all other all other muscles of the GIT, they will be originating from the splanchnic mesoderm. So first of all, what is the anomaly? As I, I told you, atresia. Okay, atresia means there is no canalization. Okay, then there will be deviation of the tracheoesophageal septum posteriorly. So here you can see. These are the condition which may lead to, so there is, there is no connection between the esophagus because there is no complete recanalization. Okay, sometimes there will be fistula between the trachea and esophagus. Okay, sometimes there is a cross connection between the esophagus and the trachea. Even these conditions can be identified when the baby is in uterus before birth also when the baby will do the scan of the mother will we'll find that there is a polyhydromnios do you know what is pilo polyhydromnios yes so if there is a condition of the polyhydromnios with the pregnant lady you can think of this condition that fetus cannot swallow the amniotic fluid okay so this is the one of the condition which leads to the polyhydromnios. So this is the feature for the tracheoesophageal fistula. Then another thing, if the canalization is incomplete, it will lead to the stenosis. Okay, and even there will be failure in development of blood vessels. And lumen will be very narrow, like here you can see. The short esophagus, as I told you, the esophagus, uh, as the liver and the lungs will enlarge, the esophagus will elongate and go more downwards. So in some conditions, if the esophagus is not getting elongation, it is not getting long. So what will happen? There will be short esophagus. So if the esophagus is short, the stomach will try to enter into the thoracic cavity. Okay, it will go inside, it will try to come to the thoracic cavity through the 
opening into the diaphragm. This is called as esophageal hiatus or hiatus hernia. One more condition when you have mega esophagus, okay? There is stenosis, atresia, and just opposite to this, there is one more condition called as mega esophagus. Mega means the big. Okay, so why it, it will become big or dilated like here you can see because in some of the part the muscles are developed but the nerves are not developed. Our ganglionic area, our ganglionic means no nerves, no ganglionic cells are present which will make the esophagus dilated because the muscles have no tone, there is no contraction. Okay, so I believe everything is clear about the development of the esophagus. Now we have next about the stomach. So around fourth week, what will happen? The distal part of the foregut will get little enlarged. Okay, there will be formation of the fusiform swelling, which is called as the primitive stomach. Like this, first it was a tube, now there is a fusiform swelling which is going to form the stomach. And this fusiform swelling, it will be having two borders, the dorsal border and the ventral border. Okay, so please, uh, just because I am not in person, so just I cannot show you the practically, but you can imagine on your body, uh, there is a tube which is having the ventral border which is anteriorly and the dorsal border posteriorly, okay? And the ventral border has attachment of the ventral mesogastrium. The dorsal border has attachment of dorsal mesogastrium, okay? Finally, what will happen? This dorsal border will grow much faster than the ventral border. Okay, so if it is growing fast like this, you can see. So this will become the greater curvature. And the ventral part will become the lesser curvature. Okay. So this is the normal, say, this is the proper size, which is going to give you the lesser and greater curvature. Now this ventral border is connected to the liver, okay, and to the anterior abdominal wall by the ventral mesogastrium. Okay, dorsally it is connected to the posterior abdominal wall by the dorsal mesogastrium. Okay, then save the epithelium, there will be proliferation and again there will be recanalization. Now what will happen now if 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 you have tried to do like this uh, ventral and the dorsal you you will find that the your lesser curvature is anteriorly and your greater curvature is posteriorly okay but in our body it is not like this okay in our body the lesser curvature it is towards the right side, the greater curvature is towards the left side, right? So for this, to make it to, it to its anatomical position, there will be 90 degree rotation in the clockwise direction. So now you can imagine if this is rotating, okay? Like your ventral part or your lesser curvature is rotating 90 degree towards the right side. Okay, so what will happen? Okay, what will happen in that condition? So now there were two surfaces, right and left. Okay, so now the right surface will go posteriorly and the left surface will come anteriorly. And why this will happen? This will happen due to the differential growth of stomach and also due to the right lobe of the liver which will enlarge much more and much faster in size. So this is the condition which I wanted to tell you. Okay, 
So this is the right border where we, 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 we are having. This is the right surface where we are having the right vagus and this is the left vagus. OK, so after the rotation, what has become the. The right surface here, anterior this is the posterior. right. Yeah, so it has become now anterior posterior. OK, so this is the right surface which has gone posteriorly. OK, and this is the left surface which has come anteriorly. So whenever you will, maybe you have uh, studied the relations of the stomach. So you will find that the left vagus is anteriorly and right vagus is posteriorly. Okay, so along with this, there will be some more rotation. Okay, so when it will develop like this in this picture, you can see this gut tube is developing. When it is developing the both the ends, the upper and lower end, they are in same axis. Right, but to receive the normal position because in our body it is like J shaped. OK, so to come it, it to its normal position, there will be some more rotation. OK, there will be some more rotation like. Which will give it to its normal position. So this we know the ventral border will move to the right. The dorsal border will move to the left. OK, now the original left side or left surface will become the ventral surface and right surface will become the dorsal surface. OK, the left vagus which is present, which was present on the left side. Now it will come anteriorly and it will supply the anterior wall. OK, the right vagus now it is going to supply the posterior wall. And along with this, the do dorsal mesogastrium will be carried to the left side and it is going to form the lesser sac of the peritoneum because now it has gone posteriorly. Now another rotation will occur at the anterior posterior axis. OK, so here what will happen? So as I told you previously that first the both the ends like this, the both the ends were straight. OK, so now the rotation will happen in the median plane that the cranial end, the cranial part will move towards the left side and little inferiorly and the caudal end will move towards the right and little superiorly. So previously the axis which was the long axis was along with the long axis of the body. Now the long axis of the stomach has become little transverse. OK, so here you have to remember in stomach you have two types of rotation. One is on the longitudinal axis and one is on the anterior posterior axis. So the longitudinal axis when there is rotation over the longitudinal axis, which is around 90 degrees. OK, so in which the borders, the lesser curvature, greater curvature will come to its normal position. But when there is anterior posterior rotation, it will give the position to the upper and lower end of the stomach. So I believe you are with me, you are able to understand. So now what will happen to the north? No, it's ventral mesogastrium. Yes, because here you will have the formation of the lesser omentum, and here you will have the formation of the Falciform ligament. OK. Then what will happen to its dorsal mesogastrium? So because the spleen is will develop into the dorsal as as soon as the stomach is developing, there will also be the formation of the spleen. And this spleen, when it will develop, it will divide your. Dorsal mesogastrium and it will form ligament. OK, first of all, which is connecting the stomach with the spleen. 
दैट विल बी कॉल्ड एज गेस्ट्रो स्प्लीनी और गेस्ट्रोलिनर लिगामेंट ओके देन देयर विल बी a ligament between the spleen and here the posteriorly what is developing kidney so there will be part which is between the spleen and kidney what do you call it spleno renal or leno renal ligament okay and this part which is remaining here it will form the greater omentum clear so the mesogastrium finally will divide into some ligaments because of the developing spleen and kidney okay so the two ligaments the gastrosplenic and gastrospleno renal and the remaining part will continue as the greater omentum so again this is a nice picture here also you can see this is developing liver okay and this is our stomach which is developing and this is the dorsal mesogastrium which is posteriorly and here you will find the or other organs are also developing okay so again here you have the spleen which is developed here and this is kidney okay so this is happening at the 10th week again because of the rotation of the this is the normal when the rotation is complete the picture will be like this which is giving like rise to this ligament okay so here there will be development of the lesser sac and there is falciform ligament the posteriorly you will see between the stomach and spleen you have gastrosplenic ligament and here between the spleen and the kidney you will have the leno renal ligament so again this is the same picture where you can see uh, in the transverse section that is stomach liver okay and there is development of the lesser sac spleen and kidney and after the rotation this is the picture you will get and these are the ligaments which are present between here which is formed by the dorsal mesogastrium so if i will ask you what structures will be formed by the dorsal mesogastrium you will be able to answer inshallah yes inshallah inshallah okay so now you have the congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis so same if there is no proper recanalization stenosis will happen okay so this what is the cause no it is unknown maybe some genetic factor will happen will cause this so what will happen here the pyloric part will be hypertrophied okay in the pylorus too much because here you you know there will there is a sphincter okay so sometimes what will happen this muscles here it will get too much of hypertrophy and it becomes so thick that the canal the pyloric canal will become stenosed okay so this is called as congenital infantile pyloric stenosis okay or maybe in general word hypertrophic pyloric stenosis this word you will find commonly it is called as congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis maybe you must have most of you have put as the differential diagnosis as the vomiting do you remember so we have another uh, anomaly which, which yeah which is called as thoracic stomach okay this will happen when as just now we saw that when is esophagus is short what it will happen the stomach may try to go into the thoracic cavity okay so in this condition when the es esophagus is very short the stomach will be displaced superiorly into the thoracic cavity through the esophageal hiatus like this this is the small mild okay this is type 2 this is type 3 and this is type 4 in which whole of the stomach is inside the thoracic cavity okay then in abnormality in the stomach if it is not completely dilated as we saw the fusiform shape what will happen there will be constricted constriction in the middle of the stomach like this 
Okay, and you will find two dilated portion. Now we saw that rotation will happen 90 degree towards the right side, right? Suppose if this rotation will happen 90 degrees in the left side or in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so it means the lesser curvature will move towards the left side. Greater curvature will be towards the right side. The left vagus will become posterior. The right vagus will be on the anterior wall. Okay, so this is the condition. Okay, and this generally, if this will happen, this happens together along with this, all other abdominal organs also will get towards the opposite side. Which the, here you can see the liver, which is supposed to be on the right side, has become has come to the left side. Okay, and even the heart. So this rotation will not only affect. Sometimes it affects only the specific organ, but most of the time because this all the rotation. Now you will see in the mid gut also will rotate. So they all rotate together. So if this rotation happens in the different direction or may you can say opposite direction the picture will be like this okay this is called as situs inversus okay what is the situs inversus here the all the organs are present in the opposite direction and this is occurred due to the abnormal rotation so if there is atresia atresia may happen in Many, uh, many form like it, we, it could be complete where there is no connection with the stomach, with the duodenum, or there may be some membranous connection is present, or maybe there is some fibrous connection only. Okay, so these conditions are rare, but it if it happens, it is uh, really, uh, it is really not compatible with the life, the baby will present with some symptoms even first or second day of life. Okay, so now the duodenum, it will develop at it. So, so now if you see all this development, it is occurring between the four to eight weeks, most of. Okay, all they start with uh, fourth week, then slowly uh, at eighth week, there will be complete recanalization. So this development of duodenum will occur from the endoderm of the caudal part of foregut and as, as well as from the cranial part of the midgut. Okay, so now we know that duodenum has four parts. Okay, so from the middle of the second part, there will be division between the midgut and the foregut. So now, the, as soon as here the stomach is developing, the, develop, uh, the duodenum also will develop and it will form a C-shaped loop. You can see, and this is projecting anteriorly. And same like stomach, this also has the peritoneal fold, which is called as dorsal mesoduodenum and the ventral mesoduodenum. It will be here. Okay, so the ventral mesoduodenum will be connected to the liver and anterior abdominal wall, and the dorsal will be attached to the posterior abdominal wall. And finally, what will happen? As soon as the stomach will rotate, obviously the upper part of the duodenum also will rotate. Okay, because it is in connection with this. So C-shaped duodenal loop also it will rotate to the right side. And finally, the dorsal mesoduodenum, which will fuse to the posterior abdominal wall and disappear. Okay, the ventral also will disappear, uh, but it will uh, disappear little later in the life when there is development of liver and other organs will happen. So same, there will be epithelial proliferation and again there will be recanalization. So now you can tell that the what will be the blood supply of the duodenum? Can you can you tell me? Because you have already studied the duodenum. 
Yes, anyone? Uh, and Siberium is in trick. Yeah, very good. Very, very good. So, but now can can you tell the specific artery which, which is supplying to the duodenum? From anatomy, do you remember? There are some arteries. Superior pancreatic cotidinal or inferior pancreatic cotidinal. Very, very good. Okay, so here the superior pancreatic duodenal is coming from the celiac, right? And inferior pancreatic duodenal is coming from the superior mesenteric. Very good. So now we have the anomalies. So first of all, as I told you, atresia, if there is no canalization or there is failure of canalization, it will appear at in many pictures, like maybe only the second and third part is involved, okay, generally. And that lumen will be completely occupied or occluded by the epithelial cells. Here also, the baby or the pregnant, if you do the sonar or ultrasound of the pregnant female, you will find that the appearance is polyhedromnias. Why? Because the baby is not able to swallow the amniotic fluid, okay, and there is no absorption of the amniotic fluid in the intestine because of this atresia. So this condition also can be diagnosed when baby is still in the womb or still in the uterus. So this is stenosis when there is incomplete recanalization. And generally, it also involves the third and fourth part. OK, so I believe, inshallah, it is OK. Now we have the development of midgut. So now we already know that the, the, the lower part of the duodenum, then jejunum, ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, and the proximal two-third of the transverse colon will be formed by the midgut. And its artery is the superior mesenteric artery. Now, even the development of midgut is little complicated. So now we will focus on only this part. Okay, so now this is the midgut loop which has become U-shaped. Okay, and it has two parts, concave and convex. Okay, so this is the convex part which is anteriorly. Okay, and it is connected to the yolk side by the wit line duct, like this, this one, you can see here. Okay, and this is concave part, okay, which is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by the dorsal mesentery. And inside this dorsal mesentery, we have the superior mesenteric artery. Okay, so this is clear. Now it has two limbs, the upper limb, this one, and the lower limb. This upper limb, it is going to form the lower part of the dunum, jejunum, and some most of the part of the ileum. Okay. And the caudal limb, it will form the small lower part of the ileum, then the cecum appendix ascending colon and two-third of the transverse colon. So clear here till now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now, the complication will start from here. Okay, so what will happen at fifth week? There will be appearance of the sickle swelling here in the caudal limb, this one. Okay, so and part of this, so now this is sickle swelling. So this is very clear that sickle swelling is going to form the cecum. Okay, the sickle swelling is going to form the cecum and appendix. So proximal to this, means this part is going to form the ileum. Okay, and distal to this, it is going to form the ascending and transverse colon. Right. Then next we have the physiological hernia. What is this? So now you know what is the hernia. So 
what is physiological hernia so at the end of the fifth week what will happen because we know the size of the intestine it is too long six meters the large if you take more both large, small and large intestine it is too big and it will start developing at exactly at the same time at the fifth week and the obviously at the fifth week the baby is too too small to hold this intestine inside because it has no or very small abdominal cavity and there is no pelvic cavity the pelvic bones are not developed and even the liver and kidneys are larger in size okay, so what will happen so this loops of the intestine which has started developing they will leave the abdominal cavity and they will enter into the extra embryonic coelom which is umbilical cord now, this one here this is the umbil umbilical cord so loop of the intestine which are also small they will start going into the umbilical cord like this now this has happened obviously but now this intestine should come inside so when this will happen so around 10 to 12 weeks what will happen the abdominal cavity will enlarge in size even the pelvic cavity will start developing and the liver and kidney will reduce in size so in this condition the intestine will again come to the abdominal cavity this is called as reduction of hernia so hernia intestine will now return back to your abdominal cavity but in some specific order okay so what will happen at first what will come the upper part of the geogenum jejunum will come okay that will be present in the left side after that the remaining part will come which will be present towards the right side then the last part which is which will re-enter is the cecal swelling because the other parts are the like tube so they will enter fast but cecal swelling will be little larger so it will be the last part to re-enter okay so the first when the cecal swelling will again enter into the abdomen at first it will come to the right side in the upper part okay below the right lobe of the liver then it will descend into the right iliac fossa which will form the right colic and ascending colon so again we can see here like this this is the upper limb this is the lower limb and here there is the presence of the sickle swelling right and this part will enter first okay so first of all jejunum will enter okay this you have to remember first of all jejunum will re-enter into the abdomen and it will uh, occupy the upper part okay the last part which will enter is this sickle swelling so now there is also rotation of the loop but this rotation is three times 90 degrees in three times okay so this will become 270 okay 270 in anti clockwise to the right okay and this rotation will uh, happen along with the axis of the superior mesenteric artery because now we know that superior mesenteric artery is already present here Okay, so first 90 degree occur, uh, rotation will occur when there is herniation. During the herniation, the cranial limb, okay, or you can say this upper limb will move to the right and the caudal limb will move to the sorry, left like this. Can you see? This is the two limbs, okay. So after 90 degree rotation, what will happen? The cranial one, this blue, which was above, 
it has become right okay and the caudal one has become left okay here also you can see this is the first rotation which will happen and it will change the position of the cranial and caudal limb then there will be another rotation which will occur during the reduction of the hernia okay when the hernia will reduce they when the intestine will try to come inside again there will be one more rotation in that what will happen the left part will come upward okay this is the left it will come upward okay and in so just yeah, just you can imagine and just you can try to uh, make it relation how it is happening so here you can see that now its left part has become the upward upper part okay and become in front of the cranial limb and which is going to form the future small here you can see nicely okay how how it has become the upward it has come up okay can you see the cursor it is it has come upward then there will be another third 90 degree so this will happen after all complete reduction so in this rotation what will ha happen the cecum and appendix will move to the right side and the coils of the small uh, the small intestine it will move towards the left side Okay, so first of all, the cecum and appendix, they will be above in the upper quadrant, just below the liver. And finally, they will descend into the normal adult position. The transverse colon will become in front of the duodenum. Do you remember the transverse colon is in front, duodenum is behind. Okay, and the superior mesenteric artery will be above the duodenum. Okay, if you remember, we have a model uh, yesterday, we saw that the posterior to the transverse colon, we have the second part of the duodenum. So here there are many things. So you can imagine in the congenital anomalies, if this rotation will not happen properly. Okay, as just now we saw the cecum and appendix previously, it was above. So you can think if it will not come to its normal position. So like this, many congenital anomalies may happen and generally it is related with the position. So here we have the cecum and appendix. So first of all, there will be presence of the cecal swelling. Okay, it is before the herniation into the caudal part then the cecal upper part of this swelling it will form the cecum and the lower part it will become rudimentary or like a small tube which will form the appendix okay the appendix will change its position from the lower part of the cecum to its lower medial part due to the growth of the differential growth of the cecum so we know that appendix will arise from the posterior medial part of the cecum so here, yesterday we were talking about the size of the appendix. So you can see this is the appendix and it's different position. Okay, so, so now you can see that appendix is growing. So it is going here, it is in front of the ileum, pre-ileal. Maybe it can go to the behind the cecum, retro -cecal. So like this, it depends on its size, okay? If the size is long for the appendix, it may go in different direction and it may cause any problem. Again, this is the picture which is showing you the rotation and getting the, so this is the superior mesenteric artery you can see, and the rotation is happening along the axis of the superior mesenteric artery, okay? So here, these are the jejunal loops, which will be the first, structure to reappear or reduce in the abdominal cavity of the physiological hernia this one okay this is the cecal swelling which will appear the last because it is like a swelling it will take time to come from the small umbilical cord
Okay, so what are the anomalies of the mid gut you can find? So first of all, uh, as we know, the physiological hernia will op uh, happen at the fourth week and it will reduce at 10 to 12 weeks. So you can imagine if this reduction of hernia will not happen. So this intestinal group will be present into the umbilical cord like this. Okay, so it may be the size may be variable and this hernial sac will be covered with the amniotic membrane. Then there will be congenital umbilical hernia. So sometimes what will happen because of the weakness in the anterior abdominal wall, the some part of the intestine, some part will be like this. You can see it's, it will be like this, not whole, only a small part will come throughout the from the umbilicus and it happens due to the incomplete development of anterior abdominal wall muscles. Okay, and here this is not due to the physiological hernia. This will happen. So there will be all the development will be normal. Uh, even the herniation reduction will happen complete. But this is this will happen when the umbilicus is not closed properly by the muscles. Okay, and here this hernia will not be covered with the amniotic sac. It it has it will be having subcutaneous tissue, fascia, and skin like normal person. So as we know, if the rotation will not happen properly, so there will be more, more anomalies. First of all, non-rotation. This, the rotation will not be complete. So only the mid gut will undergo only 90 degrees. It means the caudal limb of the mid gut will be left side and cranial to the right side. It means the mid gut will undergo counterclockwise rotation. It means opposite, just opposite to the normal. Okay, so here also you can see all the organs will be occupying its opposite position. Okay, so large intestine will be in the left side, small intestine in, on the right side. Because its limbs have moved into the opposite direction. Then you have the rotation, reverse rotation. In this, the mid gut will rotate in the clockwise direction. Okay, so just inshallah, if we will see you in practical, just we will try to see this. Okay, how this rotation, what is the, uh, reverse rotation, what is the non rotation? Okay, so here what will happen? The duodenum will be anterior. See, can you see here the duodenum is anterior to the transverse colon? But in the normally, the duodenum should be posteriorly. And here, the duodenum will be anterior to superior mesenterical artery also. And the transverse colon has become posterior to the superior mesenterical artery. This is the reverse rotation of the duodenum and transverse colon. So same if there is problem in the recanalization, you can find at, at stenosis and atresia in any part of the intestine, like uh, maybe in the genome, maybe in the ileum. Okay, the partial occlusion is called as stenosis. Complete occlusion, it is called as atresia. Here you can see. Okay, and it will happen mainly in the ileum. Occlusion of intestinal lumen by the transverse diaphragm okay so maybe there will be presence of the any diaphragm or any membrane okay so if you you think why this is the diaphragm you can simply remember presence of any membrane inside the intestinal loop okay so this is called as diaphragmatic atresia don't correlate with the diaphragm of our thorax thorax okay it is some membrane which is named as diaphragm so, 
as we know if the recanalization is not proper there may be duplication of the tube okay so it may lead to the duplication of intestine like this here you can see okay so this is the intestine normal okay if there is abnormal recanalization like this what will happen like this the two tubes will be present okay and these two tubes most of the time they will communicate with directly with the intestinal part okay and duplicated segment of the bile lies generally on the mesenteric border of the intestine and this anomaly is also common in ileum and suppose we have seen some of these structures which will not disappear like this here you have the connection okay this is the connection with the our midgut loop with the umbilicus by the fibrous cord okay so if it will not disappear here you can see so it should be disappeared completely okay so if it will not uh, disappear and it will be present it is called as vitelline fistula okay it is called as vitelline fistula when there is direct connection between the this one umbilical cord and here between the midgut loop okay then there could be only the cyst here you can see in the middle part there is no complete connection but there is some cyst which is present okay this is called as amphaloentric or amphalocyl amphalocystic cyst this one okay sometimes you will just find this is the volvulus or diverticulum and you will have some opening here which is called as sinus okay and then you can have the diverti you can have the diverticulum here which is called as mickel's diverticulum okay this is the mickel's diverticulum is one of the uh, common uh, you can see congenital anomaly but it sometimes most of the time it goes unnoticed okay so this will happen the mickel's diverticulum also will happen in the ileum okay this diverticulum will be present in the ileum now what is volvulus so volvulus means the abnormal rotation of small intestine okay it is not the condition um, in whole of the intestine mostly it will happen in the small intestine okay so in this condition the mesentery also they will fail to undergo normal fixation so here you can see the the intestines are twisted okay and you can imagine if the mesentery is not proper like its posterior border is not attached okay and the anterior border is already free and you have the mesenteric superior mesenteric artery inside so what will happen the superior mesenteric artery also will get twisted and its blood supply will get obstructed okay this is called as volvulus volvulus so just you have to remember what is the volvulus this is the abnormal twisting of this intestine which will hamper the blood supply to that area now what could be happen in the cecum and appendix so you can have the mobile cecum okay because there is incomplete fixation of the ascending colon because we know first when the cecum will appear the cecum will appear into the upper part of the abdomen just below the liver okay so if there is incomplete fixation the cecum could be mobile it may herniate into the inguinal canal also here you can see okay or it is maybe left sided cecum okay because it is mobile so it may go to the any position okay it happens due to non rotation of midgut loop if the loop will not not rotate this may happen then we have subhepatic cecum and appendix this is also we know when it will not see here if it will not descend downwards it will remain it in its primary position it will lead to subhepatic cecum okay so because 
it is yes if everything is normal only this is the problem even the patient will not present okay everything is normal uh, digestion is normal because the loop is normal okay but if there is appendicitis the you will you will not think that this appendic appendical pain is just below the liver okay so it will mix misdiagnose our appendicitis then there could be double appendix can you see here this is the another condition where you can have the double appendix then you can have the cecal agenesis that there is no cecum at all Okay, and there could be failure of recanalization, which may re lead to the atresia. Okay, so this, if there is no failure recanalization, the cecum will not get recanalized, and there will be atresia or agenesis. Clear, inshallah. So just mid gut rotation is little bit confusing, but I will advise you. We have good pictures here. Just you can see two or three times, and it will become easy, inshallah. Now we have the hind gut, and I I really wanted if this lecture is in person in offline, I could have uh, told you better, and you could have understand better. But inshallah, try to read from here, and if you feel any difficulty, you can ask. So now what are the derivatives of the hindgut? So we will go with the last topic. So we have the left one third of transverse colon, descending colon, sigma, rectum, upper part of anal canal, and also the epithelium of urinary bladder and urethra. So I believe this is new for you, how the urinary bladder and urethra has come, right? So we will see here you have one thing which is again complicated. That is called as cloaca. Okay, so what is the blood supply? It is by the inferior mesenteric artery. So now we will see about the descending colon. So this is the descending colon. So it will be retroperitoneal because its mesentery of the posterior abdominal wall will disappear and it will become completely here. You can see it will become completely. Posterior or uh, uh, retroperitoneal. Okay, the mesentery of the sigmoid colon it will be retained and it will form the sigmoid mesocolon. Now this part, the caudal part of the hindgut will become little bit swallowed and it is called as cloaca. Okay, and this cloaca and this lower part, as we know, the gut tube, the lower most part, it is called as cloacal membrane, like this one. This is cloacal membrane. And here, if you remember, the anterior part was the oral membrane or stomatodium. Now, this is the cloacal membrane. So, what is the cloaca? This is the distal part of the hind gut, means after the formation of the sigmoid colon okay till here you will have sigmoid colon but after the formation of the sigmoid colon this area it is called as cloaca this is the expanded caudal part of hindgut so caudally it will have the cloacal membrane okay laterally it will receive the opening of the mesonephric duct okay so don't worry for these names if you don't understand because inshallah when we will see the urogenital development you will come to know that what is mesodephric ducts okay generally these ducts will form the kidneys and its ureter and its contains okay the cranially it has communication with the hindgut and ventrally it will receive the allantois this is the allantois okay don't worry for this also this you will see when you will see the development of urinary bladder. So what will happen? The cloaca, first of all, the cloaca will divide into the two parts by a septum, which is called as urorectal septum. Okay, so here this is the urorectal septum, which is coming, okay. So it will develop between the allantois and hindgut. This is the 
allantois and this is hindgut so in between this the septum will develop okay now it has two parts ventral and dorsal part and these two parts will be communicating each other by the cloacal duct so here you can see again your cloacal membrane it is the septum okay the septum it is growing towards the cloacal membrane this one this is the cloacal membrane so this septum is growing and finally it is fused here can you see this membrane is completely fused and now you have two parts here okay or two cavities here so the ventral part or ventral cavity it is called as primitive urogenital sinus this one okay and the dorsal part it is called as anorectal part okay this one easy inshallah first of all what is cloaca this is the distal part of the hindgut okay distal part of the hindgut after the formation of the sigmoid colon okay so hindgut has formed the sigmoid colon finish now its distal part will become or will be called as cloaca in this cloaca there will be partitioning by a membrane okay this membrane is called as the urorectal septum which will be here and finally this membrane will elongate and it will fuse with your cloacal membrane this one so when it is fused completely it will form two cavities the ventral cavity will known as primitive urogenital sinus this one so urogenital so you can imagine it is going to give the urinary and genital part the dorsal part which is called as anorectal canal this one okay then the cloacal membrane so here it was a cloacal membrane this is this was cloacal membrane okay don't don't forget this in the first slide we saw that this is the extent okay from the oral membrane to cloacal membrane this is the extent of the gut tube so here also the cloacal membrane also will divide into two parts ventral which will form urogenital membrane and dorsal which will form anal membrane anal membrane means it will give the opening for anal canal urogenital means it will give opening for the urinary tract okay like the urethra and in female also vagina okay so again now our main concern is about the dorsal part which is going to give anorectal part which will form the rectum as well as the upper part of the anal canal so like here you can see nicely this is the cloaca right this is the cloaca this is the allantois and this is the hindgut now it has been divided completely into two parts the urogenital sinus and the anorectal part okay so now the primitive urogenital sinus it will further be divided by the opening of the mesonephric duct okay so so this this also will come again <clears throat> but i will tell you in short so it will give vesico urethral part which will form the urinary bladder except the trigone the upper part of prostatic urethra in male and the whole of the female urethra then you will be having definite urogenital sinus which is subdivided into upper pelvic and lower phallic part which will form the lower half of the prostatic urethra membranous urethra and the lower phallic part will form the spongy or penile urethra okay so for the development of git just forget this slide okay this slide will be useful for you in the next when you will see the uro uh, development of the urinary tract okay so what is important for us is the development of the anal canal 
here. So the cranial part of the. So you know the anal canal has two different origin. OK, so the cranial or the upper part, it is endodermal in origin. It will develop from the lower part of the gut tube. OK, it is derived from the dorsal part of the cloaca by the anorectal canal. What about the caudal part? So caudal part, it is ectodermal in origin. It will derive from the proctodium. OK, so just don't don't worry for the proctodium. Just remember there will be one <coughs> swelling as which is known as proctodium. OK, not swelling. Actually, it is a depression and albeit. OK, so just we don't have to go in detail, but we have to remember that the anal canal has two part or two sort of development. The upper part or cranial part will develop from the endoderm of the cloaca. The caudal part will develop from the ectoderm. OK, so now the anal membrane. So here you will have the anal membrane, which is surrounded by the mesodermal swelling, which is called as anal tubercles. And these anal tubercles will together, they will unite or form a depression which is known as anal pit. OK, so just a moment. OK, yes, so here you can see this part. OK. This one, this part which develops from the proctodium. And there is a presence of the pectinate line which will differentiate you between the endoderm and ectodermal origin. So now there will be the anal membrane which will rupture at the end of eighth week. Okay, the site of anal membrane is roughly indicated by the pectinate line. This one here. I think the uh, anatomy of the anal canal you you have already studied in the life cycle. Do you remember in the perineum? OK, if you don't remember, forget it. OK, so at present, just remember there is the anal canal and it has two type of development. Now we will see what will happen in hindgut. So first of all, one condition which is somewhat common, it is called as congenital megacolon. OK, congenital megacolon, it is also known as Hirschsprung's disease. OK, so in Hirschsprung's disease, what will happen? The neural cells are not present. So there is failure of neural crest to migrate into the wall of the colon during five to seven weeks. So what will happen? There will not be ganglionic cells. OK, there will not be any myentric plexus and the sigmoid colon will be dilated. OK, so in this condition, this generally happens only in the rectum and sigmoid colon. And this is also one of the most common cause of the obstruction of the colon. The baby will present with the abdominal swelling. OK, even uh, you can feel the colon. OK, when you will palpate, you will see that this swelling is due to the some intestinal loop. OK, so this condition is called as Hirschsprung's disease. And what is the abnormality here? This is important. What is the abnormality in Hirschsprung's disease? There is absence of autonomic ganglion cell in the myentric plexus. Distal to dilated segment of colon. What will happen in the anomalies of the anal canal? First of all, if there is no perforation of the anus, so what will happen? The anal it is not perforated. So the baby will present that uh, baby has not passed the muconium, has not passed the stool. OK, so what will happen? The presence of mesoderm between the two layers of anal membrane. There could be anal agenesis. It will end just blindly. 
okay there could be some other opening ectopic anus or anoperineal fistula that will happen in the perineum the same maybe there is atresia or stenosis okay there will be narrow anal canal then the anus the uh, there is opening is present but there is membranous atresia as we just now we saw in the uh, mid in the mid gut yes we saw in the intestine that this there will be some membrane will be present which will obstruct the opening of the loop okay so if there is failure of anal membrane to rupture at the end of eighth week okay or maybe there is a thin layer of tissue that will separate the anal canal from the exterior in this condition also baby will present that not able to pass the stool because anal canal has no opening okay so this is again the development of the cloaca this is anorectal fistula okay which is present okay so now when the cloaca will get separated here completely right in some condition the separation will not happen properly and this urorectal fistula will persist like this you can see this is the rectum and this fistula or you can say this anal canal is opening into the urinary bladder okay and this is the anal pit which has no opening okay this is the one condition or maybe in another condition the anal opening is not going into the anal pit it is going in female it is going into vagina okay and here you can see the anal canal it is ending blindly it has no connection with the anal pit okay and sometimes you can see here this has rectoperineal fistula okay which is not completely anal like opening it is just a fistula which is present in the perineal region okay which is not anal canal just the rectoperineal fistula so same in the rectum also you can have the abnormal recanalization which may lead to the rectal atresia okay and there could be anorectal agenesis anal canal and rectum properly not developed okay this is due to incomplete separation of the cloaca okay here also the rectum will end blindly okay this a very small development will happen only okay and there is usually fistula to the bladder urethra or vagina as we have seen in the last pictures like this this one this one okay so here there is not incomplete development of anal canal or rectum so like this in this condition there will not be opening in the anal pit it will form fistula with the other structures of the cloaca like urethra like urinary bladder like uterus or vagina okay so thank you so much it was a long lecture but i tried to finish and just i i i will i want you to read it once and if you have any difficulty you can ask me okay if you want to refer you can refer some embryology book okay anything you want me to repeat thank you doctor thank you so much okay the slides are very very clear uh, just try to go it once okay thank you so much any question from anyone no thank you okay thank you so much